I, I want you to just talk a little bit. I want our listeners to know you a little bit better. Uh, your backstory, um, what inspired you uh, initially? Was it something in your childhood or something in your, your teenage years or early adult life that really got you on this path of, of not only taking control of your own health uh, future, but it just leading others and coaching others up to make positive change in their life. What, what was the catalyst? Uh, it was what you'd expect from a 17 year old boy. Uh, okay. Guess <laughs> it was, it was girls. It was, uh, I, I, I grew up playing different sports. I got into hockey in particular. And so I played a fair amount of ice hockey. And then when I was done with that, I wanted to keep doing something. I just was used to, to having some sort of athletic activity since I was, I don't know, is for, I guess, as, as long as I can remember, I was always doing something, playing some sport. And so I was thinking, all right, what do I want to do? And I was like, well, I, I like girls, girls like muscles. I'll, I'll just lift weights. We'll do that. So, so, I, so I bought some bodybuilding magazines and was like, sure, whatever those guys are big. I'll just start doing whatever they're doing. And right. I didn't think, didn't think too much about it and recruited some friends and that made it more fun, of course. And newbie gains being what they are. I mean, you, you, if you do basically anything, you're going to see results in the beginning. I mean, if all you did was like start doing pushups and pull-ups and air squats every day, you're going to see results for at least a little bit. Right. Right. And so I was getting in the gym and putting in enough time. Uh, the programming was a bit wonky. Of course it was at that time, it was all about body part splits and, and really high volume, like unnecessarily high, like, okay, you're going to do a chest workout and you're going to do 20 sets for, for chest. It's, it's could, could we talk about that just briefly for yeah, yeah, anybody yeah. listed just, and I want you to keep going, but if we had ourselves at this stage of our life to talk to our, you know, our 17, 18, 19 year old selves, wouldn't that have just been great? Like, I just need an hour. Yeah. I just want one hour to let them know, like, stop doing it like this. Yep. Start like just reps, sets, uh, and some, pro some yeah. Simp yeah. And some programming uh, would have made such a huge difference. And, that's and why, that's why I wrote. Things. Yeah. Bigger, leaner, stronger. That was okay. how that book originally came about. It was, I, I self-published the first edition in 2012. It was relatively short. It couldn't have been more than 80,000 words. It was probably more like 50,000 words. And it, it wasn't much in the way of like marketing sizzle. It was kind of just steak. It was kind of just that. Like, oh, well, here are the things now that I've, this was, again, uh, I had been training, I guess, at that point, about 10 years or so. And the first seven years were... I'm, the first year or two were, were kind of productive, just again, newbie gains being what they, what they are. And then from there, it was kind of just like treading water for, for years and not seeing much of a change one way or another. At least I knew I didn't know what I was doing. So I had that going for me. And then I eventually decided to apply myself to it. And I was like, all right, if I'm going to put the time in, I might as well educate myself a little bit and, and see what I can actually do with my body and my physique. And the, um, I'd say the, once I, once I felt like, okay, I have the fundamentals worked out. Of course, there's always more to know. That's why I wrote Bigger, Leaner, Stronger. It was simply the book that I would have given myself back when I was 17 and just said, hey, why don't you just do this? And the, one of the big differences in terms of training, for example, was going from the, what is maybe still kind of a bodybuilder style, but that was very much the bodybuilder style training back then was body part splits, a ton of volume, a lot of high rep stuff, a lot of kind of quote unquote fancy programming, supersets, drop sets, giant sets, a lot of random uh, just uh, techniques. You know, one week you're going to do the drop sets and then next week you're going to, you're going to do the, the giant sets and then you're going to do the supersets. And, uh, and so I transitioned from that to much more of a strength-based program. So basically like a, a push-pull legs base with some accessory work, so with some bodybuilding work in between those big heavy barbell workouts basically, which still is, I mean, now fast forward to today, Bigger, Leaner, Stronger is in its third edition. So I've, I've 
rewritten it essentially a couple of times now. And the programming is still actually very similar. Some things have changed, but I don't think it'll ever need to dramatically change because that is a very workable program, especially for people who are new to proper weightlifting, especially put a number to it for guys who have yet to gain their first, maybe 25 pounds of muscle or so. If a guy has not gained that amount of muscle yet, then I would say he could just read bigger, leaner, stronger, and just do that. If that's all he knew and did, he would be able to get to that 25, maybe even 30 pound mark before he really has to make any major changes. And, and then I have a, a book for intermediate and advanced weightlifters called Beyond Bigger, Leaner, Stronger. And that would be what I would say he could just do next. I mean, there are many other things he could do. That's not the only way of going about it, but it, it is the perfect follow-up to Bigger, Leaner, Stronger and that it takes that program. And the biggest change, and I talk about this in the book, the biggest change that, that needs to be made is you just got to work harder now. That's it. <laughs> you have to do more volume. You have to continue lifting heavy weights. You have to deload a little bit more frequently because you are now beating your body up more. But for example, in the case of bigger, leaner, stronger, it provides nine to 12 hard sets per major muscle group per week. And that is plenty for somebody again, who is still kind of in their novice stage as a as a weightlifter, it could be a bodybuilder or even a strength athlete. And if though they want to, and that, and I'd say that's probably enough again, to get to at least the 50% mark of total potential muscle strength, it varies a bit more, but, uh, it, it's probably even a bit more than that. It's probably upward of 70 or even 80% of the total amount of muscle that somebody can gain can be accomplished with certainly up to, if you get up to maybe 15 hard sets per major muscle group per week, but that nine to 12 range is a great sweet spot for people who are, who are new. And that's been, that's been shown in a number of studies and it's been proven out anecdotally for a long time now. And so the biggest difference is that is no longer enough volume to continue progressing once you are well into your intermediate phase as a weightlifter. So as a guy, once you have gained 25, 30 pounds of muscle, no matter what you do in the kitchen, no matter what you do in your programming otherwise, no matter how fancy you try to get in periodizing your programming and your exercise selection and blah, blah, blah. If you're not doing enough volume per major muscle group per week, you are not going to progress. And if you push your volume now to the like beyond bigger, leaner, stronger provides about 15 to 16 hard sets per major muscle group per week. And that alone is enough to start moving the needle again, so long as you have some of these other things that you mentioned, so long as you at least know what you're doing with your exercise selection and you know what you're doing with how much weight you're using, right? That could be looked at in terms of rep ranges if you're using a double progression model or just percentage of one rep max if you're, if you're loading linearly. And so that's the big change is you just got to work a lot harder for a lot less and that's not very sexy. It's not a good marketing pitch, but that is the reality. I, and um, so anyways, tangent, tangent, uh, <laughs> number one, because well, we went for my story, but I, I, I figured it's some good, useful information for people. It to is. It, it, it's great because there's so many episodes where we, you know, we can go in so many directions on this show and there's so many, uh, you know, I just think recent episodes that come to mind where we don't talk enough about muscle development, muscle building, you know, and, and just, it's always worth the conversation. 